Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about the importance of having a vision for your jewellery business. Now, running a jewellery business means we are the business owner, the founder, the entrepreneur behind it. And it's important for every entrepreneur, no matter how big or small, to have a clear vision. So what does that mean? What is a vision? Well, to begin with, it's where we want to go. So what is it that we want to achieve with this jewellery business? We also think about why we started it, what's important to us, and what do we really care about within this? There are a few key factors that are important in a vision. First off, it has to be inspiring. And not just inspiring, generally it has to be inspiring to you. So the whole point of a vision is it's gonna get you out of bed in the morning on those difficult days when we've had a challenging time. We might have just had a weekend of craft fairs where we didn't get any sales and it was raining and it was cold or whatever challenges you're facing in your business. Your vision is the thing that keeps you on track to say, okay, it wasn't a good weekend, something bad happened, whatever it is, but I have a bigger purpose. There's something that I'm striving for and I'm gonna keep going. We all need that because there are gonna be times in your business that you're gonna to want to give up. It's natural, it's a completely normal part of the process. And this vision is so important to get right at the beginning because it helps protect us against leaving our business in the long run and also getting distracted in the long run. So that moves us on to the second important point of our vision. So we've already had that it needs to be inspiring, but it also needs to give you clarity and focus. So if you're anything like me, you are subject to the deathly syndrome of the shiny ball. Now, what is the shiny ball syndrome? Well, it's basically when we have lots of ideas and it's great as a business owner that we have these ideas because they're what keeps us innovating, keeps us moving forwards. But sometimes we have ideas that aren't relevant or important to our business. For example, I might wake up one day and think, do you know what, I really wanna sell handbags with my jewelry and maybe I should learn to make them. So for me, that's a big shiny ball that, oh, then maybe there's something else that I can add. But actually, Although it's exciting and fun and great to do if you're doing a hobby, if you have a business, it's so important to focus on what it is that you want to achieve. And if handbags aren't part of your vision, then you can recognize them as a shiny ball when they come into your path. Or another thing we might do is if we do bridal jewelry or typically jewelry along that path, and one day we think, why don't I make tons of jewelry for children to sell in a craft market? Again, it's coming away from what we normally do and our vision, and we have to be careful when we do that because our time is valuable and precious. And we're trying to create a brand that is cohesive, that our customers can clearly understand. So trying all different things is great to begin with, but once you decide on a vision and you know what it is you want to achieve in your business, sometimes we have to be quite strict with ourselves around boundaries of what that means and what we can do and what we don't want to be doing. Now I speak from experience of this because regularly I get shiny balls that come in my path in all shapes and form and they always seem like a really good idea at the time but now that I have a clear vision for what I'm doing I can recognize them. Sometimes it takes me a little while but I always am able to see okay actually that's not quite what I need to be doing right now. Steer back, steer the ship back to focus on what is important because we're trying to do something quite big. We're trying to achieve a business that is everything we want it to be. Now that will look different for all of you, whether it's a side business that you do alongside another job, whether you want to leave any other form of work and work on this full time as your career, if you want to build a global jewellery brand, or if you just want to make pieces in your garden shed and fund that habit. So whatever it is, you will have a clear idea of what you want to achieve. And if you don't, that's something we can work on. So we want it to be inspiring. We want it to offer clarity and focus when we need it to. 
The next key point of a vision is it can lead towards creating a plan. So once we know what we want to achieve, why we want to do it, what is important for us in our business, then we can work backwards and think, how do we get there? If we want to build a global jewellery brand, what are the steps that we need to take? How many years is that likely to take us? And what do we need to do this year, next year, and the year after, and so on, in order to move towards that space? If we want to work on our business full time and have a certain amount of income coming in, how much do we need to try and make this year in order to improve it next year, and so on and so forth? So you can see how it all comes together with just starting with that end goal. You can see so much of your jewelry business in one place. But how do you get a vision for yourself? Well, I'm not gonna lie, it can be challenging and it takes a bit of soul searching. So you really want to look inside yourself and think about what is important to you. Why are you starting this jewelry business or did you start it? What things really drew you to this? Don't be afraid to delve in deep into your feelings because these are the things that when brought to life are gonna create connections for your customers and for people who are interested in what you're doing. So think about the why behind starting it. Think about the emotions and feelings that jewelry brings up for you. What is important to you? Is it about the design and the aesthetics and the beauty? Is it about the materials that you're working with? Is it about the people and the connection, the gift giving and that act of giving something to another? Is it about nature and the earth and using those materials? You can see already there's so many different avenues and different ways that people enjoy a jewelry business. And once we have a vision and we know what it is that is the core, the sort of the heart of our business, what it means, what it's about, it makes everything in our life so much easier because we can start to communicate that. So in our biogs and our information online and artist statements, instead of just saying, my name is so-and-so and I'm from this place and I like jewellery, we can really focus on the heart of what we're doing. And that speaks to people. Customers can tell when you're speaking from a place of love and passion and purpose, as opposed to speaking of a place of, I love jewelry, but I'm not gonna tell you about that. I'm just gonna try and do the business side and hope that it kind of works, which is what I started doing and is what so many of us do. We focus our passion on the making because that's what we love and the designs. And of course we make beautiful pieces because of it. But we need to put that same love, passion and purpose into the business side of what we're doing. And in fact, I'd encourage you not to think of them as different sides, but all as one cohesive brand that you're building together. Now, I love this because I like diversity in what I'm doing. I love to be able to make one day and to be able to speak with customers another day, to be able to do videos like this another day and to take pictures for my Instagram another day. I think that variety is so rich in our lives. So do take advantage of that as a jeweler. Now that you're the owner of your own business, you have your hand in so many different pockets and there's so many different things that you can do. So coming back to your vision, we're working on how we can create our own. It is really helpful to look at others in that process. So I would really encourage you to have a look at brands that you admire and aspire to be like. They might be nothing to do with jewelry, but just brands that you love. Have a think about what's their vision. How do they communicate it? How is it thread through everything they do in their business? It's also good to look at brands that you don't like. What's their vision? How does it make you feel? What is it that you don't like about it and don't want to bring into your business? Once you've done some market research around it, it might help to put you in a place that you feel comfortable with to say, this is me. It's so important to have an identity in our jewelry businesses. That's what customers can connect with. We know that people buy from those they know, like, and trust. Having a vision gives you an identity, which helps your customers to understand who they're buying from. It helps them to know you more. They begin to like you more. 
And of course, that's where the trust comes along. Now, another thing while we're on this topic is I would really encourage you to show up regularly for your customers. Too often as jewelers, we wait until key times to speak to our customers, which might be Christmas or Valentine's Day. Of course, it's important we speak to them then, but we should be talking to our customers all year round. Whether that be a monthly newsletter to let them know what you're up to, what the making process is doing in your life, what you care about, pieces that are coming out, fairs that you're going to be exhibiting in. Whether it be a daily process of posting on your Instagram or your Facebook, your Pinterest and engaging with a community there. Or whether it be doing regular selling events like craft fairs throughout the year, selling at a market every week or speaking regularly with the shops that you're selling your jewellery to. I suppose what I really want to encourage you to do is to be regular in your commitment to your vision. So keep showing up every week. That way when it comes to the key times like Christmas and the Valentines and the summer fairs, we've already got a relationship with our customers. They're already interested in what we're doing and it's just about doing that final little step of showing them what we have on offer at the moment and how they can access it. So I would encourage you to have a little go at this task, which is to write out a vision statement for your jewelry business. This is normally just one paragraph or even a sentence that says what you hope to achieve. It can be completely ambitious. It can be something that can take five to 10 years or even more to create. That's absolutely fine because we want that inspiring element. To give you an idea, the vision behind the London Jewellery School is to help a million people learn to make jewellery. Now that's a big vision because that's a lot of people, a lot of training, and we're working on it every day. It's something that we're building towards. It gives us focus because we know that if we're doing something outside of that remit, it's not so relevant and we perhaps need to evaluate whether we need to do that again. It also is something lovely to work towards because to be able to help that many people is such, gives such a kind of warm feeling and something lovely that we'd like to do. It also helps us to get out of bed in the morning on the days when there are challenges like with our property or moving or finding a good place in central London, etc, etc. Anyone who knows our story will know that has been a key challenge for us in the past. And the vision really keeps us all going and it can do the same for you in your business. So have a go at writing your vision statement. Look at different places for inspiration. But the place I would really say is where it's going to be is inside of you and inside of how you're feeling. So dig deep, look at how you feel and it will come in time. Best of luck with writing your vision statements. Do check back here for videos in the future. We're going to be posting different inspirational videos, tips, lessons to help you run amazing joy businesses. It's been lovely talking with you and I wish you a wonderful rest of the week. Bye for now.